So I use ChatGPT to create SEO link bait from scratch. And here's the cool part. I'm a complete amateur when it comes to coding and development. But the good news is that you can also be an amateur and you don't need to have any experience in coding to be able to create your own SEO link bait in only an hour. Okay, so the first step in this process is that we need to identify link bait ideas. And so you could, of course, just come with these ideas on your own, but it's best to really look at what's available in your vertical. So in this case, this is going to be in in the SEO industry. And I'm just gonna, there, there's a lot more opportunity in the SEO industry compared to other industries. So, but you can still use these same concepts. So the first thing you can do is you can actually just do a basic Google search, like free SEO tools. You can do free health tools, free fitness tools, free magic tools, whatever it is that is relevant to your industry. So then go through and then you would start to dig through all of these lists and build a nice list of tools that are available right now. So what I did is I actually did this same exact search. And if you see here, you can go and scroll and look at all the different tools. But a faster thing for me is I actually just did SEO tool in the Keyword Explorer and Ahrefs and then looked at share traffic share by domains. And it started to look at some of these domains and see if anything really popped out. And right away, we see small SEO tools. So we run this through and what I do is I, I run it through the Site Explorer and then we go to Best Buy Links. And what I wanna do is I wanna see what tools have attracted the most backlinks and then we could potentially create something similar. Now in this case, I did end up actually creating one that's in here, but I also found another one. And the reason I found another one is because I also started to look at tools that I frequently use. So you know, what are some tools that I use quite frequently just in my daily practice? And one of them is actually if we go and look for a script timer, you'll see that this one here is one that I use all the time. So I actually go in here when I'm creating my YouTube videos and I need to see how long it's gonna take, I'll put my script in the, the average length and then we'll click calculate and it will tell me it's gonna take roughly 12 minutes to record the video. And in general, when you're doing YouTube videos, you want it to be, when you're doing long form content, you probably want to do roughly 10 minutes or longer. And so this tool helps me make sure that my, my script is long enough to achieve that objective. So what I thought about was like, well, if I always use this script or if I always use this tool, why don't I just create a similar tool? And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you and what I did. So this is gonna be pretty crazy because I have very little coding experience. I know just enough to survive when it comes to HTML and CSS. But when it comes to JavaScript or anything outside of those two coding languages, that's where things get really difficult because I just, that's not what I do. So the good news though, is that you don't need to be a coder to accomplish this objective. And I'm gonna prove that right now. So what I did is I created a little prompt in here and you'll see create HTML, CSS and JavaScript for a tool that does the following. And then I just said script timer that instantly estimates your script time for a video at your reading speed with this fast and easy tool. So what I did is I actually went to this tool here and I looked at the exact description that they use and I just basically copied that description and put it in here because they already wrote a good description. So I wanted to feed the AI the right thing. And what is it, it did is it immediately spit out the HTML it spit out the CSS and it spit out the JavaScript, okay? So now your question might be is like, how do I actually take this code and put it on the site? Well, the good news is with WordPress, it's incredibly easy. All you have to do is actually just download this WP Coder plugin. And what you'll do is when you go in here, you create, create a new little option here under the list. And then you're just gonna paste the HTML code in here. You're gonna paste the CSS code in here and then you're gonna paste the JavaScript code in here and then click update. And then once that's done, you just need to create a dedicated page for this tool. So what I did is I created this script timer page. I went over here, created a little container, and then within that container, I used the short code option and then I just pasted the short code in here. And then I'll show you, you know, this content here. We'll talk about that in a second, but you'll see here, we'll go ahead and preview and you can see what this, this ended up looking like after we were all said and done. So if you compare this to the other one and you'll see that quite similar, right? I was able to create an almost identical tool. And in fact, I thought I made mine even better because when they do this, they actually give you the ability to change the, the cadence and the speed at which you deliver it. But I actually decided that it'd be better for that to be selected at the beginning. So the user can select slower and then they would go in here and we'll do the same 1800 and they'll calculate. And it's gonna take roughly 30 minutes at a slower pace. So if you look at theirs, 
Once again, exactly the same outcome. So, and I thought it would be better to have this up front. And then lastly, I also had it create a little box where you can actually paste it in here. So you could paste the whole script in here and get the desired outcome. So the crazy part about this is this did not take me long at all. In fact, this probably only took about an hour to build this from end to end. And you'll see though, it's not as simple as just going in here and generating the code and it's gonna work perfectly. It, it certainly made a functional tool, but I, it did require me to <clears throat> modify and improve this quite a bit. So you'll see here, I'm gonna show you a couple of the prompts to ultimately make this a little bit better. So go down here. And one of the things I said is create a field that allows a user to paste their script into a box to see how long their script is. So I actually added that part after the fact. So originally it was just gonna be that you would just enter the word count. So if you go over here, just be able to enter the word count. And so that's what it did originally. So to make it similar to that other tool to at least be competitive, I need to add that secondary field. So once again, it generated the code for that. And then we go down here. So then next thing is, I did include two options for the tool. And so we have obviously field one and field two. And then I gave it some additional instructions about <clears throat> the cadence of delivery. So once again, just delivered that code again. And I just kept making these modifications over and over. And I wanted it to be, I, I wanted it to look better and be better than that current tool. So just kept doing this. And there was a lot of modifications as you can tell. So, and in fact, it actually wasn't even working at one point. So the calculate input, uh, it wasn't actually doing anything. So once again, there's a little bit of error in the code. It fixes the code, fixes the problem. So next thing that happened is the tool actually wasn't responsive on mobile. So I just said, make this tool responsive on all devices. Did that again and made it perfect. So if we go over here, you'll see it's absolutely responsive on mobile, has a responsive design, works perfectly. So then continue to do this. Couple more errors battling through this, but for the most part, you know, added, oh, and then I had another issue here on this front. So it like didn't finish the code at one point. So I, I put the error code in here and it fixed the code for me. So keep going down here and you'll see all of the, the changes I made to the code to get it to the point where it's at. Okay, so then eventually get down here to the point where it's finally done and we'll go down. I kept making some additional changes. So at this point, the last coding thing that I asked it to do was the calculate button turns white after submitting. Okay, so there was like a weird thing when it would submit, this would just stay white. So change the CSS, now it's perfect. So that was it, once the, code, once the actual tool was all set up and working perfectly, and I, I liked the design that it had set up, now it's just a matter of actually putting some meat on this page, right? So it might be hard to rank just with the tool itself in this copy, so I figured I would add some actual meat to this page. And so what it is, I just thought of some ideas that would be relevant to this particular topic about writing scripts. So first prompt I gave ChatGPT was share 10 benefits of writing a script for video production, okay? So then it gave me a bunch of benefits. Then I also did share five quotes from famous figures about writing scripts. I'm just spitballing here, coming up with ideas that I can add to this page that no one else has done, right? And this is one of the biggest misconceptions people have about creating content. They think that it's about modeling the competitors, but actually what we should be trying to do is we should be building a page that's very different. So the way that my page is structured is different than the top competitor, right? So I do have a similar tool, but the way that the, the cadence of my copy, the type of stuff that I'm putting in here is very different than any other page. And we just want our page to be different than the competitors. That's what we should aim to do. There might be some similarities, but for the most part, if we can make it different, it's gonna stand out. And that's gonna give Google a different input, which then we could potentially get better performance in that way, just because we have different a different setup altogether. So did quotes, and then I also told it to rewrite the benefits, because it was saying like a script multiple times, so I rewrote it. And then I also did the sharing surprising facts. So I I said, you know, share some surprising facts about scripts. And then I have, of course, made sure to include YouTube, podcasts, whatever. And then it gave me a bunch of statistics. So that was it. So it didn't generate all this content for me. The only thing that I really modified 
was this section here. So I actually went through Grammarly, did a little bit of manual changes on this copy and then threw it on here because I, I wanted to make sure that this test was pretty legitimate, mostly just AI. So once again, this is all AI generated, AI generated, and then of course more AI. But if I wanted to take this even further and I wanted to increase the depth of the content, I could just say something like, give me some frequently ask questions. I'll just say about scripts. So then this should help us generate even more content ideas for this. And what we can do is we can add this content even more to this page, make this page even deeper. And once again, you can't just use this straight up. I mean, you could, but it's probably better to do a little bit of manual analysis. But ultimately, we can just keep making these pages deeper and more content rich. And so what you'll see here is the page itself. We actually created this, made it nice, uh, match the actual theme of my site, added the content. And the last thing it is actually create a dedicated page for free SEO tools. And so we're gonna be adding the little free SEO tools in here. But the real reason I did this isn't to actually rank this page per se, it's to get more internal links coverage to this page and get Google to crawl and index this page and all the pages I'm linking to at a much higher rate. And so now Google, you know, is going to have so many access points to this page here, which is going to give it more access points to script timer. Okay. And so now we link to that and we see the final outcome here. And now it's just a matter of, you know, did this work? So this went live on the 31st, go and look at the results. This went to number 10 on January 2nd. So it went from invisible to number 10 in about two or three days, roughly. So this is an indication that I have done something correct. And that is a very good sign, right? We, When Google gives us a ranking in the top 100, usually that's my indication that I've done something relatively well. But when it's, when it's in the top 20, then I know I've done something like that is really done well, right? So I didn't have to build this from scratch. If I had to build this timer from scratch, uh, or I have to hire a developer, this could have cost you know anywhere between $2,500 to $5,000 to develop this tool. And it also would have taken forever just to get it back because developers are busy, right? So, but in an hour, hour and a half, I built a tool from scratch, a fully functional tool from scratch, a fully functional piece of link bait. And not only is it functional, but it's actually already performing. So within three days, we have, we're already capturing more organic keywords, already more organic traffic. So if this doesn't excite you, then I don't know what does because this is just insane. Like this, this levels the playing field for development and coding, right? So before this could have never been done, like we would have had someone build this from scratch, or I would have had to use Google and find out how to build all this, but not anymore. That isn't the case anymore. We can do this from scratch. We can build these tools from scratch. And the thing is you don't need to be afraid of chat GPT's ability or any future technology that can develop code like this. You just need to learn how to leverage this tool to get the most out of it. All that we're doing is we're, we're building applications on the existing technology. This is not, ChatGPT and OpenAI is not here to destroy the jobs. What we should do is we should leverage the technology to our advantage. And at the end of the day, the technology itself isn't the real value. The real value comes from what we feed this technology and what it produces as an outcome. So it was, you know, it was my idea to come up with this link bait idea, right? I'm the one that spawned this idea because of the research. So you are in control of this, but you can use this technology to greatly accelerate your ability to put out link bait similar to what I created. And there's a million and one ways to do this. This is just an example in the case of SEO, but you could repeat this in any industry. For example, you could be in the coffee industry and you could create a calculator about the perfect coffee to water ratios. Okay, you create a little tool about that. There's endless ideas and now the only reason to not do it is just because you don't want to learn this tool and you don't want to learn just a little bit of code. And this is just, this, like I said, has leveled the playing field. So, you know, within an hour and a half, you could have your own fully functional link bait. And so I highly recommend at least messing around with this and really coming up with a huge amount of link bait ideas and then just using this tool to execute on these ideas. Speed is the name of the game in business and an SEO. So move on these things fast. Do not wait. Do not procrastinate because this technology is going to 
change everything. In fact, it has already changed everything and it's only gonna get even more aggressive and fast. So you need to stay on top of it and take advantage of this.